What's up, guys? Welcome to the Line Check Podcast. It's me, Brennan Villarreal, your host. And today I'm in the studio with Chris Sweeney of Wright Mills. Uh, it's a coffee shop and a mill prepping and also have, you know, food to eat there as well. Very healthy style uh, mills located on 4th Street right next to Fingerprints. Uh, you guys all know where that, where that is. Yep. Um, and Chris is the owner. So how's it going? What's up, guys? Yeah. Um, so I like to tell people we're not really a coffee shop, mm-hmm. but we are. We're like a healthy eatery. Yeah. You know, because... Yeah. Yeah, we didn't start off as a coffee shop, which is crazy, but here we are pouring coffees. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I mean, we all like to drink coffee after a workout. Yeah. It's always convenient to have a coffee in there, you know? Yeah, exactly. Let's go. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Why don't you tell, I mean, you obviously know a lot more about your business than I do. Yeah. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about Wright Meals? So, Wright Meals, um, initially, we started off as a a meal prep company. about 10 years ago now, August, I think will be 10 years. Wow. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's a big accolade. Yeah. It started uh, in my house kitchen. Um, I was renting a place up in Signal Hill with three other guys and and uh, was struggling in life. I was uh, doing real estate and had my car repossessed like twice during that time. Um, had no car and just, you know, in a struggling yeah. place in my life. And, uh, this guy from my office, which was all the way in Diamond Bar. So I was commuting every day, wow. but then my car got repoed and I didn't have no money coming in, no income. But I was always in shape. Uh, I always ate clean. Um, so this guy in my office said, like, hey, Chris, uh, you're making all that healthy food that you, you were bringing to the office. What can I do to get, get that up here? Um, I had like negative like 40 something. I can't remember the number in my account. So he Venmo me money. I uh, took that money. I walked down to the traffic circle at the Ralph's and I got like chicken, ground turkey, sweet potatoes and like basic food. Right. And I'm not a cook. I just knew how to cook for myself. It looked like dog food. And um, so I get an Uber all the way to Diamond Bar, which is expensive. And I couldn't get an Uber back. Couldn't use my cell phone because I couldn't pay my phone bill. Mm-hmm. So I asked the office if I can call a friend. My buddy got me an Uber back home. So I get to the house and we're on Wi-Fi and I had all these notifications on Facebook. And this guy, Wally, he's a realtor, uh, posted the meals on Facebook. And that's when I had all these people commenting on the photos. Mm-hmm. Can you cook for me? Can you make those for me? And I was like, fuck, yeah, shit. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm in this kitchen with my uh, one of my roommates, Mo Stewart. He owns Brothers Keepers Barbecue. Mm-hmm. So he, he's all pissed off. I'm using the fridge. I had all, you know, the fridge mm-hmm. stocked with all this shit. Mind you, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of making whatever I can think of. Like I'm um, ground turkey and broccoli or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. you know, like just dog food, I called it, <laughs> you know, and uh, didn't have a car either. And so I'm up doing like 25 to 50 meals and it's taking me six, seven hours mm-hmm. borrowing my roommates' cars before they go to like work or whatever. So I'm out at like four in the morning doing deliveries and uh, made enough money to get my car out of repossession. And my buddy, Richard, who's a firefighter for Long Beach, he's a captain now, uh, drives me all the way out to Fontana to get my car out of repossession. I remember getting in my car and I break down. And I was like, all right, do I go back to real estate or do I continue this completely illegal thing I'm doing in my kitchen? No idea what I'm doing, but I just made this amount of money to get my car you know, out of this yard. And um, so I stuck with, that's how it started. You know, wow. and that's how meal prepping, I just continue with it. And yeah. And 10 years later, here you are. 10 years later. Yeah. We have a storefront called Healthy Eatery. We do, um, we have our meal prep grab and go fridge, do coffee, juices, wellness shots. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been a crazy 10 years. That's crazy. But that's, it's, yeah, I feel like everyone has this story where it starts, you know, trying to figure out what they're, they they want to do with their life. And yeah. Uh, maybe having some sort of outlet or it just kind of falls onto them and then they just take it and then go with it. Exactly. And I remember it kind of being super discouraged because, you know, I I went to college, I was an athlete Mm -hmm. um, and I was around professional athletes. That's actually how I got into the, you know, the athlete world because I trained with a lot of pros. And um, I remember just like crying all the time. It was an emotional like first couple of years because I'm just like, what am I fucking doing? I don't want to cook in my kitchen. This is stupid. But you know, it was getting me by. I was just doing it just to just to, you know, make make it in life. Yeah. You know, and I had um 
you know, no car. I, uh, every time it was a struggle paying rent. I barely ever had a phone because I couldn't pay the phone bill. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, those first, I mean, it's still a struggle today, but you know, those first two, two to three years was really rough. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was a ton of grit and I've always been an extremist in everything I do, you know? So I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm going to make this happen. And yeah. Yeah. Like you were just saying you train like a triathlon athlete. <laughs> yeah. I get hurt all the time. I, so I've been in the hospital for rhabdo twice. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, I go pretty hard. I'm an extremist. Yeah. Everything I do, yeah, go hard all the way. I, I, I think I'm like half of an extremist. I mean, like this podcast, um, you know, we're just like, yeah, let's do, it. and then we're like, okay, let's do an episode every single week. Yeah, and it's been a year and some change, and you know, we're still doing it, and then cooking all the time, and you know, just it's a going, grind. and then training for marathons, and then working at a restaurant full time and doing podcasts. Yeah, man, it's a grind though. Life, life's a grind yeah, though. Yeah, life is a grind. Life's a grind. Like I, I have no sympathy for like lazy people. You know, it's it's to make it in life, you gotta you gotta work. Yeah, you, you gotta know, work. And it's. I mean, I wake up super early every day. My days are super long. You know, sometimes I think my my employees think like once I'm at you know leave the shop, my life's like you know. <laughs> Put on pause. Yeah, yeah you know, no, done. it's it's nonstop. Yeah, you man. still have a phone. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, it's nonstop. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a fun journey, you know. Um, when did uh, Right Mills open? Like the actual storefront. So the actual storefront. Um, so we so Berlin, we took over Berlin space. Yes, and yeah. I was super nervous about this because they're a big staple in Long Beach. Yeah, um, Cass and the owner was a client of mine for roughly six years. So she oh. was ordering from us for her um, portfolio fit, which mm -hmm. is at Iconics. Yeah, Iconics. And, um, you know, so we had a fridge there. We were constantly stocking it up for her. And so during this time, I was actually using the bow house as my kitchen. So I would go there and bartend, and I wouldn't, someday I wouldn't clock in, I mean, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> so I was using the bow house, and in exchange, I would bartend, and I would use her kitchen. So I'm in this, you know, I'm bartending from like 10, 10 a.m. to sometimes, you know, 9 p.m. when they close. How many, how many, um, like orders do you have to fulfill for your, uh, so, meal prepping? So like by, on a, on a like daily or by average, myself. Yeah, so by I yourself. was doing like 300 to 400. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. And I, mind you, I had no cooking experience, yeah. but I, I've been in like the industry, mm -hmm. you know, you know so how to I, move around. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, uh, I did this cool thing where I, I put a, uh, a GoPro in the kitchen and somebody told me do this put a GoPro in the kitchen and watch F1 racing watch the you know the pit where they change the tires and mm -hmm. look at their movement and so one day I put a GoPro in the kitchen and I'm able to crank out like 300 to 400 meals like that's why like when I'm in my kitchen and they complain about certain numbers like yeah. no dude I used to do this by myself you need it your rotation you, you know you're making too many steps in between yeah um but yeah so that's I was able to do three to four hundred um, and then, so I'm in the bow house kitchen and, um, COVID, I remember COVID hit and I was really scared, you know, but we actually, that's when we really blew up. Um, we started working with like the LA Keens, all the hockey teams that were playing them. Mm -hmm. Um, we got huge with the, uh, NFL combine groups. I mean, we all still working with them prior, but it, it got more aggressive working with them and because no one was doing buffet but we were doing grab and go packaged mm -hmm. meals. And so we were able to go to hotels and sell, you know, the packaged meals because hotels weren't doing buffet That's anymore. Right, yeah. We were able to do contracts for the LA Super Bowl. We were able to, we got connected with the Los Angeles Sports Entertainment Committee. So that's when I really blew up. And then I remember the bow house like, okay, hey, you're not gonna, um, what are you gonna do when we open back up? Cause I had their walk-in. There One time we had like, I think it was like 1200 meals in there. And I was, and I have a video. It's yeah. pretty sick. I open it up and it's just <laughs> it's lined crazy. up against the wall. And I'm just like, fuck, dude, you're right. What am I going to do? So I kind of freaked out. And I, so I started researching, like, where can I do this again? And this guy um, reached out to me. Um, <clears throat> it's a wedding venue place. And he made a deal with me. And it was a blessing, but it was, I, I kind of regret it, you know. But uh, so we used this wedding venue place and they did all my production for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was going good, you know, as promised in the beginning, but I wasn't hands-on with anything, and I hate that yeah. because I've always been hands-on since day one. And I would get complaints all the time, like, dude, fuck, like, hey, I'm getting these complaints. Like, you know, it would 
continuously yeah, happen, on, you know? Man. And so, um, there is one day, uh, this guy told me and we're using this, this location and his staff's doing all the cooking for us. And he said, uh, you know, I'm a gift to you. I think he was drinking or whatever. And he's like, I'm a gift to you. You know, you need me or whatever, some stupid shit. And I remember saying, you know, fuck that shit. Fuck you. Like, I, like anybody who thinks like I need you, I don't mm-hmm. because I've worked my fucking ass off to get to where I'm at today. Yeah. And, um, we all have a story, you know, and I, I'm not going to be here in a pity, but I've been through some shit. You know, I've been to rehab twice. I've, I've been through some shit. Like my dad passed away unexpectedly this year. And, right. um, so I, uh, I, I'm like, you know what? I don't need you. So I started looking around the city, you know, I call the realtor up. Hey, I need your help. I, I want out. I need to, this is the next step. And I think this is like God's way of saying, all right, you're done, dude. This is the next step in yeah. your life. Scared shitless. You know, what if it doesn't work out? What am I going to do? I'm freaking out because this is all I've known to do. You know, I don't know anything else but meal prepping and working with these pro athletes. I'm like, can I get with a team? Like, what can I do? Yeah, you know? Exactly. And, and so, uh, Kasten reached out and said, Hey Chris, you know, we're closing up and I know you're looking for a kitchen. Um, uh, it was cool because she's like, you're the one I would think I would want in my space. I'm like, Oh fuck. I don't know. Like, you know, this is kind of scary. Like this is a restaurant. Haunting, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and initially, initially I wanted to, um, blow it out and just do like an industrial, you know, yeah, cloud like, kitchen yeah. concept, you know? And, um, and then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Dude. I think we decided to make a restaurant like two months prior to us closing escrow. Right. Uh, and then my, my chef, Victor, God bless him. Um, I met Victor a long time ago at bow house and, uh, he was at Ubuntu at this time and he heard what I was doing. I was like, dude, if you want to help me out, like come help me, man. Like I need help. Yeah. Cause I don't, this is like, I, I can't do this alone. So he, I brought him on board and dude, we're in there painting walls, moving, you know, fixing kitchen appliances. I feel like I became like a general contractor within like <laughs> yeah. two months. Right. Yeah. I was going to Lowe's and home Depot every day. And, um, and, uh, you know, we created this, like, I was like, you know what, let's make it like a clean, healthy menu. I, I go to restaurants and it's not really like, it's not healthy, you know, yeah, they have like two options. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's like everything's drenched in like oil and it's not, it's just, I feel mm. bloated when I leave and I want to be able to say like, Hey, you know, we use extra virgin olive oil, go to our kitchen. You'll see no dairy or whatever it is. Right. And, um, clean products. I want it very clean and, but not boring. Cause yeah. that's what we're known on our meal preps. You know, we're not, it's clean, but it's not boring. You know, that's where we, we attract all these pro pro athletes. It's not dog food anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, the the before and after pictures. It's like a crackhead, you know, going sober. It's pretty- I used to eat dog food. Um, I used to be an MMA fighter. Okay, like ten years ago. Okay, and I would yeah, I'd eat dog food. Just uh, no salt. Just all steamed veggies and chicken breasts and brown rice. That's, that's it. crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> we it was uh the before and after pictures is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so I I went into uh the Berlin space, um, you know, I was like, I'm going to keep my name right meals. Cause that's what we're known for. And here we go. Let's, let's, let's ride let's it out, it. you know? And we kind of got backlash in the beginning, you know, cause we weren't Berlin. A lot of people thought we like, you know, kicked them out and you know, the, the community. Yeah. And, it's like, what man, happened? we had it's some funny when a place closes or a oh new place my. opens in a new space, like the, the comment sections and whatever Facebook or Instagram was like, yeah, that, uh, you, do you guys don't know the story? But no, but it's like, crazy because we've always been um, in this like sports world. You know, mm-hmm. I've never really been part of like the restaurant community, even yeah. though I've worked for restaurants. Yeah. And <laughs> Brian, being, like, Brian being, Addison's being page, the owner, or yes, like that. yes, yeah. and Brian Addison's page, the Long Beach food scene. Right, I was so scared of it, and this person commented, "Oh, you know, I." about right meals you know i had the best avocado toast the comments were just savage like right the, about my name right uh-huh. now so you know and i'm like yeah, i'm not changing the name yeah. you know, this is what we're known for you know and later on we got accepted and we're getting busier mm-hmm. you know it's pretty cool um but yeah it's been a it's been a it's been a journey dude That's i think <laughs> awesome and crazy at the same time yeah yeah um congratulations thank you, you know just on the whole journey itself yeah um it's definitely it's it's cool to see where you've come from and to where you are right now. Thank you. And still growing. Yeah. And evolving. I feel like it's like starting all over, you know, in from a when different, I, in a different, in its new iteration. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Like, I, I mean, just all the, the headaches that we went through opening this up, if I have people who are like, damn, Chris, like, are you, how are you doing it? Because we didn't have a street for like five months. They did street construction right when we closed escrow. 
that was really hard. I ate through all my savings during that time. Um, it's super discouraging. And, um, I had, you know, let go of a bunch of staff. Cause I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. You know, we had no foot traffic, sidewalk clothes, you know, and, and then, um, permanent issues with the parklet that I paid yeah. for. It was just a ton of things that just really kicked my ass. And it, there was like moments like I wanted to give up and I never had those feelings before, mm-hmm. but I was like, fuck, I, I, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. And, um, and then my dad passed away, um, uh, July 19th. So it'd be a year coming up. And, um, that was, that was another, you know, obstacle that I hit. Um, I was like, fuck man, like <laughs> when it rains, it fucking pours. And, I showed up every day, you know, Mm -hmm. I didn't take, I haven't taken time off, you know, I'm I'm in there every day, even on my off days. And, you know, you just, you just smile, you show up every day. People will realize, like, I feel like people in the community are like, oh, this kid's like, he's in here every day working hard, you know, and we've been getting a lot of people showing up. We have our regulars now and it's, it's cool. It's cool seeing like a flower just blossom, you know, and it's, it's important. Those, those little things are very important to, you know, people that come into your space and they see like this your right mills is the sign yeah but you are the face of right mills and yeah you know they this is what they're coming for exactly and, and it like shows in the community and yeah the food and like the love it's a like, lot of love what you're doing too, yeah you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah my staff like we you know we pick our staff like very carefully. I'm all about customer service. Mm-hmm. You know, I want people to come over my very space. Important. I mean, you're you used to be a bartender, you know, yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like little things like table maintenance, like little straw wrappers on the table, like that shit fucking bugs me, <laughs> you know? So I'm like walking yeah. around, like picking Figure that off, you know, yeah. just little things like that. Um, you know, greeting people when they leave or walk in, you know, that's, today, that's very important, very important. Very important. And I got in on my barista today, you know, and she's great, but you know, she's been there since day one. And I'm like a person walked out and I got on her. Yeah. Like she was near my, Hey, like someone just yeah. walked out, you know, you didn't say, you know, yeah. anything. Um, and then, yeah, just, I think just, I think people coming into your space and making them feel like they're at a home. It's, mm-hmm. that's very important to me. I agree with you. 100%. Yeah. And that takes you a long this, way. I talk this, talk about that with my girlfriend all the time. Yeah. It's just like making people feel welcome, you know? Exactly. You're, you're, uh, they don't know what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to show them the way when exactly. they walk into your space. Yeah. Like, I, you know, people will stand there. I'm like, I can tell it's like their first, this yeah, is your first confused. time here, yeah, you know? Exactly, like, wait, yeah. let me, this is some of our options we have. And they're like, well, what is this place? You know? So I'm like, what is this? A meal prep? I looked it up. It was meal prep. We, yeah. you know, that's what we're known for, but we do have like, you know, a healthy dining menu and, it's cool though. We get people walk in, they sign up on our meal put pl- our meal print uh the meal, meal prep, prep plans, <laughs> yeah. you know. So uh but there's a lot of I feel like I'm running two restaurants right now. Which it it is pretty much is, yeah. yeah. Um, which is it seems like a lot of restaurants are doing like the opposite that of what you do. Like they open a restaurant with a food menu and then they realize that like a meal prep like to go option is like something that can, but you were doing it from like the other way around, which is yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And <laughs> some days, man, I don't know how we do it. Like, w- w- like combine seasons are busiest mm-hmm. time. NFL combine. That just passed already. Yeah. Cause the, yeah. the draft already happened. Yeah. yeah. So we get like different agencies in the area. So in all the agencies are housed, a lot of them in Southern California. Uh-huh. So from, it's like, God, like, what is it? It's, from december to march is just crazy with meals because all these guys are getting ready for the draft we'll have guys like groups of like sometime we had like 25 at a time they're eating 22 meals a week breakfast lunch and dinner you know we're just doing all these macro counting for them and we work with dietitians so it's also customized to the athlete for these guys, or a lot of times, like yes, the same, yeah. yeah, yeah, because they if they have the dietitian, they they have a dietitian on board, yeah, like so, they're a defensive lineman, obviously, yeah, they're double, more, triple oh, carbs line, yeah. or whatever, and it's 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 a lot of work, it's stressful, and you know the delivery process, and these people are really, I wouldn't say needy, but they're. Um, high maintenance, yeah, in a way, because they need to eat. It's and important. The, it's this is very job. important. Yeah, it's yeah, it's their job. Their job. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's our busy time. So we're like cranking out, you know, you know, thousand plus meals in the kitchen. Plus we're doing the restaurant front end of the kitchen and people show up like, are you, you guys cook all this here? I'm like, yeah, dude. <laughs> we make it happen. <laughs> we, we have a double yeah, decker if, oven. If no and one's a- <laughs> been to the space. It's not a very big space. No, but dude, we, and the we, kitchen is 
pretty small. I've been in there before. We, yeah. we make it happen though, yeah. man. I don't know how we do it, yeah. but we do it. Um, you just got to be organized. Mm -hmm. I think exactly. Just, yeah. Prioritization and organization. Yeah, organization. Yeah. Timing. Everything's all timing, everything. And, you know, my chef's great at that too. You know, we, we work together because one, this is my baby and I've been there since day one, you know, and he's just, he went to Johnson and Wells Culinary School, I think it's called. I can't remember. I'm not sure where the, um, that one. In Rhode Island. And okay. He, he, uh, <laughs> he was at Ubuntu, um, opened up. He was at Boathouse back in the day. Okay. But um, so he's very like knowledgeable yeah. in the food. I bring him an idea of what I want. He creates it. That's so like awesome. all of our sauces yeah. are gluten free. Um, we don't use any dairy in all of our like meals and mm. stuff. So little things like that. So yeah. Why don't you talk about um, for the audience a little bit about your like meal prepping packages or what you kind of like offer there? If someone's interested in like starting up with you guys, yeah. So we um, we always tell people you can either come into our grab and go fridge, but it's always best to go online. More variety online. Um, they can just go on there and either select six or eight ounce, you know, meal proteins. Um, we have our like twelve different options, ten to twelve options online. It's a rotating menu. They go on there, they select, add to their cart. Super easy. It's like you're shopping at like Instacart or okay. whatever. Um, then we have like the monthly plans. So a lot of people jump on that. Um, you save money. You get we give you like a credit. So it's like if you're paying five hundred on your credit card, you're gonna get like five hundred and forty worth of credit for the mm -hmm. website. Um, you pick it up every Sunday, or we deliver it every Sunday. We have a refrigerated delivery van that goes out, um, and yeah, it's super easy. And then they can pick it up from the shop. Yeah. What's your uh, favorite meal? Like uh, right now, or like maybe your all time favorite? All time meal? favorite meals, my country style steak so it's dairy free garlic mashed potatoes green beans and our top sirloin round cut steak um and then classic but simple yeah but delicious. yeah and yeah. then our chicken teriyaki bowl is really popular mm. that's uh gluten-free teriyaki sauce broccolini carrots onion squash brown rice um that's actually our number one seller even delicious. our overnight oats too i love overnight oats yeah those two are our number one sellers um i was just talking to someone yesterday about how we much we love chicken uh chicken chicken teriyaki oh yeah <laughs> it's like it tastes so good and you feel healthy about it yeah <laughs> like, yeah and I, I like our sauce it's not like it's not there's very little sodium mm -hmm. you know yeah. and it, you don't feel like you're just eating crap yeah i know? hate when something's super salty like too much soy sauce <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 cool though. yeah we have um we've been adding new meals here and there onto the rotation uh, i think our newest ones like the chicken kale salad's really popular Steak salad's really popular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I saw your guys' uh, steak dish that you posted on Instagram recently. I'm like, steak damn. salad. Yeah, like, yeah, damn, yeah. that looks good. Yeah, I've been eating that like every day. Medium at work. rare. Yeah, blue cheese yeah. on there. So that's like the only dish that we put like dairy, uh -huh. but it's like it's perfect. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I fuck with the good steak oh, yeah. like that. You gotta, you gotta, you <laughs> yeah. gotta come and try that one. That yeah. one I have every day now. Yeah, chimichurri um, steak with. Um, God, my, my chef's going to kill me because I don't remember what's on it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, ring it in, I ring it in as a customer, yeah. too. Because he's like, fuck, dude, look, I'm busy, but I'm hungry. You yeah, know? Yeah, so yeah, make yeah, it for I me. Eat, yeah. yeah. Um, and then our, our avocado toast, too. That's been crushing mm -hmm. it. You know? and Everyone loves avocado toast. As yeah. much as people want to talk shit on avocado toast. You fucking love it too. <laughs> I hated it. I never you don't liked, like avocado toast. I didn't like avocado toast. I and love avocado I, toast. I told him like, hey, I want to do something different than everybody around here. Let's you know do something unique. And I'm not even over exaggerating. A lot of people come in. They're like, this is the best avocado toast we've ever had. And I'm like, Are you, like I gotta what, really. What, what's your avocado toast? <laughs> so we use Aleppo pepper. Uh, we do uh, watermelon radish, uh, avocado. But he does something with the avocado. It's just. It's very different, okay. and I don't want to say it, but it just <laughs> yeah. And we don't we're not stingy okay. with the avocado either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we do a rose with it, so you're using like yeah. a pretty much a full, full avocado, avocado. Yeah, yeah, for the whole thing. Uh, we use uh, this organic, um, uh, like arugula rainbow mix stuff that we get from a, a farm that we order from, and then um, I feel like I'm missing an ingredient. Um, but yeah, and then our sourdough bread, we get it from Nona Mercado. Nice, good friends of the owners there. So our bread comes from Nona. And uh, yeah, the Aleppo pepper. Yeah, it's simple, beautiful. but it's like, yeah. it's really yeah, filling. Yeah, a lot of your dishes are, it's not like you're going to like blow anyone's mind. That's no. like a culinary expert, but it's just simple, done right. Done I feel like simple is always sometimes better too. That's the way I like to eat. Yeah. I mean, besides when I eat like trash, you know, whatever, like fast food or pizza yeah. I'm eating, but like 
a majority of the time I eat very simple and clean. Yeah. Um, on those times I'm not eating fast. I mean, <laughs> you said you're training right now yeah, too, I'm right? Yeah, so, marathon. Yes, yeah. When's the marathon? Uh, October 5th. All right. Yeah. So we're going to go nine, on runs? 19 weeks. We're going to go on runs then? Yeah, I'm down. All right. 4 30 in the morning. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to get you up at 4 30. Yeah. We'll go run. Um, how did, like, I want to talk about a little bit about being uh, healthy and like eating clean. And working in restaurants, you know, and you worked as a bartender for a long time. Yeah. Like, how has that helped you, like, you know, like a lot of people in the restaurant industry, they they go out a lot, drink a lot, do a lot of drugs, yeah. uh, <laughs> eat fast food, eat Biggie's pizza at yeah. 2 in the morning. Um, how would you say, if you're going to give advice to anyone that, like, can move in a direction where they can start leading a healthier lifestyle and eating clean and also, you know, working out. I feel or like at least doing one yeah, first. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I feel like, I feel like, you know, in that industry, you know, I, I was in that industry, you know, bartending as I was doing meal prepping and stuff. And, um, I feel like a lot of us have an addictive personality. Yeah. I think we are, we all have an addiction to something, you know, and it's not a bad substance. It could be anything, right? You just got to learn to trigger that. Like I, 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 I don't know if I mentioned this, but I've been to rehab twice. Um, in the beginning of the process of right meals, I was drinking a lot, depressed, and, you know, it's not knowing where I wanted to go. And then I had tachycardia. I was doing, yeah. you know, a lot of, you know, blow. And, you mm -hmm. know, that was my choice. And I went to rehab twice for this. And I remember it just kind of clicked, look, you have this addictive personality. Transition that to something healthier, you know, go back. I got back into like running and working out because I, I, I ran track in college. I mm -hmm. ran at Long Beach State. And um, I was always, that was my addiction was working out. It was my, you know, my escape from, you know, issues or whatever. It was my therapy. And so I transitioned from, you know, going out, partying, drinking and stepped away from a lot of that to cut out a lot of my friends and transition that addiction to something positive, positive it, outlet. It's crazy when you stop um, drinking and, you know, partying. You lose your, all those friends, too. Your dude. friends that you thought you were your friends Not are your friends. no longer your friends. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, and I used to know, I was, I used to always go out and like, I want to know everybody. You know, I'm, fuck, I, you know, that can be a bad or a good thing, right? But everywhere I went, I... I wanted to be like my presence. I wanted to be known like I'm here, you know, like I would throw big parties. I would, you know, just be that bartender or whatever it was. And I, uh, at some points I'm like, dude, this is, this is crazy. I look back on it. I'm like, I don't know any of these, these people don't support me today. These people, I don't talk to them today. I wouldn't, yeah. you know, they're not going to go on a run with me. It's, these are my, my drinking buddies, yeah, you exactly. know, and very toxic, you know, and it's a toxic industry. It's yeah, it's very toxic. It's hard to get out, but you know, we, it's doable. You it's, just have to make a choice. Yeah. Um, and it's also hard. I mean, if you're still around those people working with them and then you choose to like, you say, Oh, I'm not going to go out tonight and go drinking with you guys. I'm going to go home and go to sleep. Cause I'm going to go work out in the morning. Do you think you would get like shamed for it? I mean, I, I, I started working in a restaurant where the culture has kind of changed there, but like I've worked other places and where I was like really in it going out and I wasn't working out yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think there in the beginning, I think my biggest mistake was when I went sober, I was public about it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I feel like it's more so for like, um, it's definitely changed though now. I feel like it's more okay people are okay with it a little yeah, bit more now accepting. back then it was it was kind of like what are we talking about dude yeah you, the fuck yeah. you quitter yeah you know it's yeah. like he's like yeah. don't be a bitch is probably something a chef would say <laughs> yeah yeah what do this you yeah. know it was it was crazy um but i went there was times like i went like almost almost two years um like i drink today but i'm not like anywhere near what i was before like i i have stories you can go down that route too but like mm -hmm. crazy stories of just the extremes i would do to get you know, drugs or whatever it was. And I'm like, I look back at that. I'm like, fuck man. Like, how did I come out of that? You know, like my, my best friend today, Richard, he's a firefighter. And, um, dude, I put that guy through hell too. You know, like he's always been there by my side. Good friend of mine named Nick. He's a police officer today. And that guy's been there by my side, you know, and taking me to rehab, all this stuff, you know, and I, I worried a lot of people and it was just, I think it was just self-awareness. I had something beautiful I'm building and why am I going to jeopardize this? And, 
you know, ruin these these people that actually do care about me, mm-hmm. not my drinking buddies, but the people that actually care about me. Like, I don't want to jeopardize that, yeah. you know. And I, and I've always been an athlete, you know. I, like, that's, I, sh- I don't want to go down that route. I'm better than that. Yeah, you know, and just and, finding the love for it again. Yeah, and that's all it was. And you know, if I don't have all these friends, who gives a fuck? You know, like I, today, all these people I don't talk to. You know, and my my friends are my 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 employees at my job, and you know, my girlfriend, my you know, my dogs. I have four mm-hmm. dogs. Hell yeah! You know? So those we are my dogs. kids. Yeah, yeah dude, I'm a big, dogs are my kids. I'm too. a big dog person, dude. I will. T- <laughs> yeah. I've taken dogs from homeless people on the streets who I've seen oh. like abusing them and stuff like dude like can i have your dog yeah like, i don't take them that's take, it. yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. i say do, do you not want your dog man like yeah, you're over I'll here go, kicking it yeah and then we'll find it at home like i've done that so many times yeah, i'm a dog that's guy. amazing yeah. yeah i love dogs uh our dog is getting a little older and you have a little his stair so he's like a little tiny terrier yeah. mix and he has a stair set go to our bed but like he's like starting to not not be oh. able to go on the bed like on the stairs. I'm like, what's wrong with you? So you know what you do? You make like, the bed on the ground. Yeah, now. <laughs> I was like, I mean, you're not getting old, dude. You're yeah, still yeah. young. You're gonna live forever, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, not, you're, you're fine. You're yeah, good. dude. That's and that's the worst too. Is like this year, like we put down one of my dogs, and then my grandmother died, and then my dad mm. passed, and I was wow. like, fuck, man. <laughs> like, and losing a dog was really tough. Like I like I mourn. I still miss Jenny. You yeah, know man. that was rough. Yeah, losing dogs is not easy. No, um, no. Yeah, I come home and then I pick up my dog and like a little baby. Nice. Little yeah, dude. There are kids. Around, and then our friends. His tummy. <laughs> yeah, our friends are like, what? what? But yeah. yeah, dude. We can if go on and on about yeah, dogs. <laughs> dog people that don't, or people that are not dog people, don't get it. They're not real people. Yeah, they're, I don't. <laughs> I, are, I don't trust those, those people, man. Like I, I actually have acquaintances that you know that you know order meal prep and stuff. I'm like, I don't think I can be friends with you because yeah, just the you way you, you talk about you, dogs. You don't like, no. like dogs. What's wrong? With yeah, you? man. That's a yeah. Come on. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, so you you guys have been doing uh run clubs. Well, hosting run clubs at Riot Mills. Yeah. With um, like what's it called? Like therapy or uh, recovery sessions. Yeah, so we um we're not a run club. Yeah, you're so not. So <laughs> we're not a run you're club. Hosting run clubs. Yeah, yes. so we we reached out to different run clubs in the community. Now uh, we just want to make an you know an open space for people to come and we have uh one of my buddies he it's um West Side God I'm gonna butcher the name I think West Side Sauna don't kill me but anyway so it's a sauna it's an eight person sauna and we have cold plunges and we put them out in the parklet. Uh, we do like 15% off everything, all the people that participate and we just go on a three mile run, one mile walk and come back and hang out, you know, drink mimosas and, you know, it's just a community mm-hmm. thing. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're trying to build that up right now. We had our third one this past Sunday and then we're going to have our fourth one on June 23rd. I'll so. be there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I won't because <laughs> I have an event that day. Okay. But maybe I, if my girlfriend will let me come <laughs> early and do All it. All right, girlfriend, come on. Yeah. yeah you got to let him run. Um, but yeah, it sounds amazing. I, I love that because recovery sessions are very expensive. And, you know, a lot of people don't really know about them or have access to it. It's very expensive. And to be yeah. able to, you know, have that for, you know, athletes or everyday runners or yeah. normal runners and just the go check out a cold plunge or sauna and all that. It's yeah, good. We, yeah. We, uh, my buddy, um, he owns movement chiropractic. So oh, yeah. Yeah. So Mike. yeah, he's a good friend uh, of yeah. mine. So he's there too. So he's posted up with Norma tech. Uh, we'll probably have body work on the next one. Cause it's, we're going to make it a lot more bigger than it, cool. you know, the previous mm-hmm. ones. But yeah, so Mike, uh, Dr. Mike, he, he's there. So if you know, you want to take advantage of, you know, Trying out a Norma yeah, Tech, exactly. never done it. Had, Norma Tech is awesome. Yeah. So um, um, shout out Mike. He helped me uh, heal my back, my lower back, pulled <laughs> some muscles back there, uh, deadlifting. Okay. Shout out Mike because yeah. he's been helping all my injuries <laughs> yeah. too, dude. Every injury I have, I've gone to Mike for yeah, years. I, I need to get him on the podcast so we could talk about how to move in a kitchen yeah. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Don't bend over. Squat down. <laughs> like that video. I don't know if you've seen those videos, a proper way of like lifting, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That'll be a great one. Great podcast. I'm, I'm going to reach out to you soon. Yeah. About that. That's a good one, actually. Um, yeah. So we're about to finish up real quick for yeah. now. Um, it was great to have you on the podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, make sure everyone go check out Wright Mills on 4th Street. Um, get some meal prepping if you're interested in like staying healthy, eating clean. Uh, go check out their event on uh, the 23rd and go lift some weights. Appreciate I mean, not it. lift weights, 
I'm going to lift weights with you pretty soon. <laughs> we go to the same gym, Iconics. Yeah. So, wait, hey, actually, since we're on this podcast, 15% off, we'll create a coupon code for you guys. Okay. Line check, that'll be it. 15% off. Anybody, you know, wants to order meal prep, there you go. You plug in that code and we give you 15% off. You heard it. Um, it was a pleasure to have you on thank the podcast. Thank you, man. I appreciate today. it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, congratulations on everything you guys are doing, too. Thank it's you. pretty awesome, yeah. man. Thank you. Uh, I like what you guys are doing. And, thank uh, you. You know, I'm all about fit and staying all right healthy, see you so. at 4 30 tomorrow yeah a.m not p.m <laughs> <That is> seriously <laughs> all right guys appreciate it man see thank you, you. bye